Electric cars keep getting better each passing year, and this 2024 Audi Q8 e-tron is the proof. Audi was one of the first luxury automakers to market with an electric crossover called the e-tron, and now they've introduced a second generation. It's now called the Q8 e-tron so that it fits more tightly within the Audi model lineup, and it has some massive improvements that show that electric vehicles are just gonna keep getting better and better as time goes on. All right, now let's take a look at the outside of the Q8 e-tron. The one that I'm driving is actually the Sportback model, which is a little bit tapered at the back as we'll soon see it's a little bit more efficient and has a little bit of a longer range as well but let's start up front where all q8 e-tron models are going to get this new front fascia you see a lot of black here in the grill and then outside the grill as well i think they wanted this to look a little bit more like the e-tron gt even though that model actually now has a silver or, or actually a body color like grill insert but basically, it looks like a gas-powered car. If you want an EV that doesn't just stand out as, oh, that's definitely an EV, the Q8 e-tron does that. And this front fascia doesn't just look pretty good. It also has a 6% improvement in aerodynamics for the drag coefficient, helping Audi get a little bit more range out of this vehicle. We also see the new Audi logo. This is going to start appearing on more Audi models. It's more two-dimensional. I kind of think it has sort of an 80s retro design. Let me know in the comments if you like the new Audi logo or if you preferred it the old way. Now, you're gonna get 20 inch wheels as standard on the e-tron Q8, but Audi says that all of the designs are a little bit more aerodynamic now just to help with that range. These are gonna be the 21 inch wheels that you can get on the Prestige trim. You can also get 22 inch wheels, but only on the launch edition model, which is going to be a one model year only thing. There is also an ultra model, so you can actually downsize to a 19 inch wheel, but you can only do it on the base Q8 e-tron Sportback, so you can't do it on a Prestige, but you can actually get 19 inch wheels with uh, more lower rolling resistance tires, and that's gonna give you a little bit more range, which we'll talk about in a little bit. You also see something new here on the doors. You actually get the word Audi and Q8 Sportback e-tron Quattro, which is, kind of a lot it's a lot for a long model name but we're going to start to see the model names and the word audi just like put here on the b pillar kind of an interesting thing and like i said we are driving the sportback model so you're going to see the biggest difference here at the back the regular q8 looks more like a conventional suv this is kind of an suv coupe I think that the Q8, the gas powered one, does a little bit better towing the line between looking like a normal SUV, but also having that kind of coupe-like style. This definitely looks more like one of those coupe SUVs. You see you have the spoiler here on the back. You have a very swooping uh, glass piece here instead of more, of more flat one that is definitely gonna cut off the cargo space a little bit. I do wanna talk about the headlights and taillights for a second. They look super cool at night. They do some really cool lighting animations. I think the taillights are by far the coolest part, but the headlights also do this really cool thing where they project light onto the road. So I'll have B-roll of that so you can see it while I'm talking, but it does look really cool indeed. We do also have our Q8 badge, also in that kind of new Audi style font with this kind of red logo, even though we don't have the SQ8, which is coming a little bit later. In terms of practicality, there is a small price that you have to pay when you get the Q8 Sportback. Now, the Q8 Sportback does have a longer range than the standard Q8 e-tron, but you do lose about two cubic feet of cargo space here in the trunk, which admittedly really isn't that bad going from a regular SUV to more of a coupe-like one. So I will say that I probably would make that trade-off in terms of cargo space if you prefer the style of the Sportback. Now, one thing I will complain about back here, this is a very expensive SUV and there is no latch or anything to drop down the rear seats. You are going to have to come all the way over here, grab them here and drop them down. That feels really kind of cheap on a vehicle that's this expensive. In addition to the storage space in the back, you do get a small frunk. It's not very big, but as you can see, the charging cable fits in there just fine. You could probably fit a few other things in there as well. It is kind of nice that the charging cable is out of sight, 
out of mind and you don't really have to worry about it. And speaking of charging, the Q8 e-tron does see some improvements over the old e-tron. So we actually have a bigger battery than before. It used to be a 95 kilowatt hour battery but Audi has now used stacking technology to basically stack the cells on top of each other. So they've now managed to fit a 114 kilowatt hour battery, 106 of that is usable, in the same amount of physical space that the old 95 kilowatt hour pack used to take. That's going to improve both the usable capacity as well. It is now 93% usable where it was 91 before. And it is also going to improve the range. You could only go about 225 or 206, uh, 226 miles in the previous e-tron. You can now go 285 miles on the regular Q8 or 296 if you get this sport back model. You can actually go 300 miles if you get that ultra package with the smaller wheels that I mentioned that's only available on the sport back. That's a 30% improvement in range and they've also managed to improve the charging speed as well on this battery. It goes from 150 kilowatt peak to now 170. That'll get you a 10 to 80% charge in just 31 minutes. Now, if you were to plug in the Q8 e-tron at home on an AC charger, you'll get nine 9.6 kilowatts, which is pretty average. And now that it has a bigger battery, that's gonna take about 13 hours to charge. But for $1,850 extra, you can actually get a second charge port that goes over on the passenger side. That one, using this included charger, can get up to 19.2 kilowatts. That's going to give you a full charge in just six and a half hours, which is so quick on an AC charge. The only problem is I'm not sure that a lot of people are going to have 19.2 kilowatt output out of their house, especially if you live in an older home. It is also worth noting that because the Q8 e-tron is a Volkswagen Group product, you are going to get two years of free charging at Electrify America, which is really nice. Here in the back seat, we get a really nice amount of space. The Q8 is a nice size vehicle. You do have a little bit less headroom here on the Sportback than you would get on the standard Q8 e-tron. We've got a decent amount of leg room, although this seat is back a little bit because it is in the easy entry mode. We do have our own climate controls back here, heated seats as well, USB-C ports down there. We also have our sunshades. It's basically what you would expect for a vehicle of this price point, but it doesn't do anything super special. Now let's hop into the driver's seat of the Q8 e-tron Sportback. We do have soft closed doors, which is quite nice. Our stop start button is down there. We do not have uh, one of those EVs where you just kind of get in and sit down and start it. This is a vehicle where you are going to have to push a button. The interior is not a whole lot different from the previous generation e-tron. We've got a 10.1 inch upper display, which is a nice size. I mean, it's getting a little bit small by today's standards. I mean, I just drove the Volkswagen Atlas, which is a much cheaper vehicle than this. And that has like a 12 inch screen. So I would maybe like to see a little bit of a bigger upper screen, although there's definitely nothing wrong with this. It's Audi's touch MMI system. It works really well. Wireless CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. I really don't have any complaints with this. We've got kind of this weird shifter down here. Um, you bump this kind of silver part, so down into drive, up into neutral. You can kind of use your thumb and your finger here. When you go into reverse, really great 360 degree camera. Again, Audi just does this kind of tech really super well. Push P for park to get it out. And maybe the reason this screen's not that big is that we also have this screen down here. So you don't need to like pull up a separate climate menu. It's always down here. You can just click, you get like that haptic feedback on the screen to let you know the temperature. We do have heated and ventilated seats with massage function because we do have the prestige trim here. We do thankfully also have a volume knob with um, forward and rewind buttons as well. We do have a few hard buttons here for auto parking, for our safety systems and for our cameras as well. The materials in here are great. I love this wood finish. I think it looks really cool. It also feels really premium. Very soft touch materials pretty much everywhere. This is a very premium Audi cabin. I do like the seats as well, those massage sheets that I mentioned. Really not a lot to complain about. A lot of storage space here. 
you can see we've got our cup holders which you can kind of tuck away if you just want some storage space in here this is actually a wireless charger in here that you can put your phone it's all kind of open so good amount of storage space there and of course we've got audi's virtual cockpit display this has always been great We've got uh, tons of customizability. You can make the view bigger, so you can have a full map. You can make it smaller so that you can have bigger gauges. Really nothing to complain about the interior here. I will say though, it's not the most exciting interior. We do have some nice ambient lighting and whatever, but if you want like a flashy interior, you're gonna be a little bit better off with a BMW or a Mercedes. This keeps it simple, but nice. All right, now let's wrap up by getting the new Q8 e-tron out on the road. And we'll talk about some of the improvements that Audi has made to the electric motors on this Q8 e-tron from the previous generation where it was just called the e-tron. So we've got 402 horsepower and 490 pound-feet of torque. That's actually the same amount that the e-tron had when you were in boost mode, but I've talked to Audi about this and all of their specifications say that they're basically rating it at that horsepower all the time now you don't have to be in boost mode whereas the previous generation the e-tron it was technically rated at 355 horsepower and 414 pound feet of torque so a little bit of improvement there now the performance on this is not really savage you'll have to wait for the sq8 e-tron which is coming out that'll have three electric motors it'll be a lot more of a hot performer Audi says that zero to 60 in this regular Q8 e-tron will take 5.3 seconds. And now let me go ahead and slow down, put it in dynamic mode and show you what it's like to accelerate in the Q8 e-tron. Ready, let's mash the throttle and let off. A Little bit of a kick. But then, yeah, it, it, it gets off pretty quick. Smoothly, quietly, there's no like, kind of enhanced engine sound, so to speak, really didn't like throw me into my seat. So if you're looking for that kind of Tesla-like slap your head and give you a headache kind of acceleration, you're definitely not gonna find that here. Maybe wait for the SQ8 e-tron, but this is just a really nice, comfortable, Audi product. And Audi made some interesting choices going from the e-tron originally to this Q8 e-tron that makes this vehicle drive a little bit different than other EVs that I've been in. Audi is very quick to tout that the front motor is only functioning on demand. So if I'm just kind of coasting, let me go ahead and take it out of dynamic mode. If I'm just sort of coasting, the front motor is basically disconnected and I'm running as a rear wheel drive vehicle to be a little bit more efficient. And then as I feed in the throttle, it decides, oh, this, the driver wants more power. I'm giving more power from the front. Or if I put it in that dynamic mode, it'll actually lock it into the all wheel drive. And the Q8 e-tron doesn't really have a one pedal mode like some other EVs do. It has three regen modes that you can control using the paddles here. So you can put it in the first, second and third regen modes using the paddles. So I just put it in the heaviest regen mode. And as you can see, it is bringing the vehicle down to a stop, but it's not a really hard deceleration that would allow me to do one pedal driving at anything other than a lower speed. See, I'm still creeping right now. And then interestingly, when I do bring it to a full stop, it is gonna like hold there. It doesn't really have a creep function, which is kind of interesting no matter which regen mode you're in. So you come to a stop, take your foot off the brake, it doesn't really go anywhere. You have to hit the throttle again to move. Kind of interesting that Audi didn't put a creep function in this. I thought it was, it was defaulting to kind of like the auto hold, which you can do as well in this car, but I thought that was what was doing it and stopping it from creeping. But as it turns out, the car just doesn't creep. And that's really not a problem because when you aren't in the region modes, you notice just how good those electric motors are at like recouping energy and just like being very efficient. Um, for example, I'm going like 30 miles an hour right now. I'm gonna take my foot off the throttle and just coast. And we're coming up to this stop sign and I'm like not slowing down at all. Like I'm just, I, I'm gonna need to put it into the regen mode, which you can use to like slow down and take turns or whatever, but not come to a full stop. It just coasts so well. You can like 
sense how efficient it is. It just doesn't lose speed, which is really good when you're trying to maximize your range. Some other improvements to the Q8 include uh, redesigned steering hardware. I think they wanted to make it feel a little, give it a little bit more feedback. Audis are known for very light steering, which this does still have. They've also made some suspension changes software wise to the air suspension. It rides beautifully, um, but with the com combined with the steering, it is a very nice vehicle to drive. I do think that this does feel slightly sharper than like a gas powered Q8, you know, low center of gravity, pretty nice steering, air suspension doing a great job taking care of the bumps. It is so quiet and serene in here. This is just a really nice driving experience. So that was the 2024 Audi Q8 e-tron Sportback. If you just want the standard Q8 e-tron, it's gonna start at $74,400. Stepping up to the Sportback is gonna cost you $77,800. So a little bit more expensive to get a little bit less space, but you do get a little bit more range in the Q8. Now this Prestige trim that we're driving with the black optic package and a few other options is gonna run you about $92,000 is quite a bit of money and that does give you a lot of other options if you're looking into EVs that are around the same size. Obviously the Tesla Model Y is out there for a lot less money. It has a better range than the Q8 as well. You also have the BMW iX for around that price assuming you can be careful with the options. I really like the iX as well. It has a little bit faster charging and a little bit more power than the Q8 as well. And Audi does have an SQ8 version coming out soon if you are looking for a little bit more power. I'm very impressed by how Audi was able to move from the e-tron to the Q8, improving the range, improving the charging, all of that good stuff while still keeping it a proper Audi electric vehicle. This just goes to show that electric vehicles are going to keep improving very rapidly. I don't know where that leaves you if you already have a vehicle like this in your driveway and the next model year is just gonna crush it on range so that's something you might have to worry about but I do like these improvements a lot I don't know if the Audi Q8 e-tron is going to be my favorite luxury EV in the segment but it is a really nice one I really hope you've enjoyed this look at the Q8 e-tron for more videos like it before be sure to like subscribe and ring that notification bell to be alerted of our latest videos I'll see you next time